This is Bob Bakert uh, with Jazz Guitar Today, and we're here with virtuoso Martin Taylor. Uh, one of the things that, just so you know, I don't go into people's history because especially someone is with as, as much, you know, history as you have, uh, if they want to, if they don't know about you, shame on them. But uh, there's there's reams uh, about you all over the internet uh, about your history, um, you know, going back to um, Stefan and and all of that Crepelli um, and, and all the different things that you've you've done. And so we don't really focus on that so much. That's fine. What we want to focus on really is kind of what what you're up to now. You know, first of all, I've admired your playing for like forever. I mean, your your tone, your sense of melody and harmony. And you're known really as a fingerstyle player now, hmm. but I've heard you play single note bebop lines and you can, excuse my expression, you can play the shit out of that stuff. <laughs> <laughs> but, but, you know, but today you're, you're mostly, you're, you're making your, um, you know, you're, you're making your bones, if you will, um, playing fingerstyle, you know, melody guitar and you do it. Hmm so beautifully i mean really the, the tone is tremendous tell, tell me about life what's what's happening with martin yeah, taylor well, catch well, catch, up, catch in, our people up well i was back in the us uh in uh april no september and because i had to had to postpone my annual uh, guitar retreat in the catskills mm -hmm. um, last year obviously for obvious reasons uh, when the pandemic hit, so I went to everyone. Kind of everyone said, "Well, it's okay. We'll we'll come next year." So uh, I managed to I managed to come over, despite the fact that the America was the U.S. was closed to, to outsiders. Um, but I got a special dispensation um, uh, to allow me in. I had to go to the U.S. Embassy and beg them please let me in <laughs> uh so i came over and i we did that and then frank vignola and i did a few dates together and i've also been playing i, I played in norway denmark um germany spain italy and even in the uk which i don't play here that much i did a short tour here yeah so back to playing again so I've, I've got to say one thing I've got to say is that I know a lot of a lot of a lot of musicians that I know really missed playing you know and strangely I didn't I mean, <laughs> as, as much as I like to play <laughs> <laughs> I certainly I didn't miss going to airports but no it wasn't like a, a terrible thing oh I'm, you know like I've been my drug has been taken away from me right it wasn't like that at all it was uh, yeah, I thought, yeah, you know, but I do things at home anyway in, in here. So I've sure. got my online school and my Patreon site and writing books and things. So I've got plenty to do do here. Um, but when I got when I went back to it, then I really, yeah, I really, uh, I wondered at first what, what it would be like to play again mm -hmm. and with how, how long it would take me to get back into it. But it, it didn't take any time at all. And I just got, got back into into playing you know because i've been doing it for so long you know i've been i've been on the road for the best part of 50 years um 40, 48 years or something like that 18 months that was the longest i've ever been in one place ever in my life wow for such a long time uh, so it was, it was great coming back yeah well it really i mean how i started was was really like playing sort of the older kind of jazz you know and playing um, my dad was a big fan of the Hot Club of France, so obviously Django right. Reinhardt. I always played with a pick, yeah. and then a bit later on, I got more into playing straight ahead jazz, playing playing bebop, and I played in, in in groups. But playing solo was always fascinated me, and the guitar as a, a complete instrument fascinated me, because I used to, you know, I'd, I'd play in, in in groups with piano, bass, drums, and a horn player maybe. Mm -hmm. I used to think to myself, well, when I'm playing single lines, it's a bit like a piano player playing just with, only with one hand. There's all this other stuff that we can do as 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 well. So that that really became a fascination for me. So it, it was always there, 
And I remember going to see uh, Andre Segovia when I was quite young and just think being amazed, you know, just, just a guy getting up on a concert hall platform and just playing the guitar all on his own. And I thought, yeah, I'd, I'd love to be able to do that. But but playing jazz, because I've because that's another thing I've, I've always played jazz, even though, you know, for someone of my generation, you'd think that uh, yeah, I probably came up from, you know, the, the Rolling Stones and uh, and everything. But uh, I didn't. I played jazz right from the beginning because my father was a jazz musician. Mm -hmm. So I just wanted to play jazz. Then really, when I uh, I, I met a, a great guitar player, um, when I was about 19, I think I was, uh, a, a gentleman called Ike Isaacs. And Ike played guitar with Stefan Grappelli at that time, a job mm -hmm. that I kind of took over uh, a while after that. I, I kind of, he kind of took me under his wing. I was doing a gig. I did a, the, the opening slot for a Barney Kessel gig when I was 19, yeah, I was 19, a gig in, in London. And, uh, and Ike was there and he, he said, Oh, come around the house and we'll, we'll have a play and a chat. And, and I remember talking to him about how I wanted to play solo, but I hadn't really heard any, anybody play solo guitar, play mm -hmm. jazz on solo guitar. And so he played some George Van Epps for me, some Lenny Bro, and then of course, Joe Pass, who I'd already heard. Mm -hmm. And he kind of set me on that journey because he was a wonderful solo player himself. Uh, at that point, I could, my idea of playing solo jazz guitar was chord melody, really. And so I played something for him, just a kind of a chord melody thing. And when I finished playing, he said, well, that's, that's kind of boring, you know? <laughs> The way you're playing oh, oh great. so i said well what what would you do then so he said well i would play this kind of thing it, it was here's that rainy day i played and he played and all he had all these lines go lines going on sort of going on in the middle like it's like an orchestral arrangement i thought yeah i want to do that so he was really the guy that opened my, my eyes then when i started to play with stefan grappelli stefan always used to get me to do a solo tune on every gig so he very much encouraged me to play solo. So they all started to kind of merge. Then it wasn't until uh, 90, was it 93? I made, well, I made my first completely solo album in, in 86, and that, which is a little kind of experimental thing. I was never completely happy with it. I was, it was the early days for me. Then in, I think 93, I made an album called Artistry mm -hmm. and that changed everything for me because what it did up to that point, I had a purely jazz audience. And then for some reason, just people that liked the guitar got into mm -hmm. this record. A lot, a lot of people that are into classical guitar got into it. And um, I started getting invited to play kind of events, events that I wouldn't normally be invited to as a jazz musician. And then people coming to my gigs, and buying that record, who wouldn't necessarily go and hear jazz anywhere. So, so this record is art, artistry you're talking about, right? Artistry, yeah, yeah. on Lynn Records. Yeah, in 92 uh, is what they they listed. Uh, sorry, yeah, 92, and mm -hmm. Steve Howe produced it for me. Oh, wow. And, and um, uh, yeah, that kind of set me on that, on that route. At first, I wanted to, you know, start start playing solo gigs, solo concerts. And I couldn't really get anyone interested. So oh, even you know promoters that I knew wanted me to play with a band, and they said, "Oh, no one's going to listen to solo guitar for an hour." And I kind of agreed with them. I thought, "Yeah, I'm, I'm not sure whether <laughs> whether I could keep anyone's attention." <laughs> but, but when I did the first night completely solo, not like doing a doing a, a short set of three or four tunes, right? Um, I was quite nervous about about it and but it, it worked out fine and nobody nobody left um nobody threw anything at me and <laughs> and then kind of word got about about this and then it became that everyone wanted to anyone that wanted to book me wanted me to play solo and then it became more difficult for me to actually say well actually i've got a bunch of musicians i want to want to play with no we want you on your own you know so so that that kind kind of changed so it's really for the the demand changed really and yeah i i think you know there's only a few guys that i can think of that can sit out there with just them and the guitar and be compelling 
you know um obviously you know joe pass could do mm. it uh your your buddy tommy emmanuel certainly can do it but that's a whole different yeah. <laughs> that's well whole, that's a whole different <laughs> yeah it's a whole different thing but um but you know there's a there's um there's only a couple of guys that i can think of that can have the, the well charisma you know on stage to performing charisma to to keep an audience engaged with what they're doing and it's not chops it's not the tone it's not it's not there's there's a, there's another element of 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 the presentation of the music that you have you know you, you have that, that other element is is storytelling there it is thank you and and telling storytelling through the music i mean yeah mm -hmm. i speak to the audience as well and uh, i i have a very you know i don't have an act i don't so i don't have a script right um, when i when i speak with the audience uh but but when i when i speak when i do speak with the audience um i engage with them in a way that if like we would be be talking now and you know i talk a little about about what i'm playing also learning how to uh, how to pace uh, a gig as well mm -hmm. so that it has a, a real flow a real flow to it and um Yes, it's got to be, you know, it, it does have to be entertaining. And like you say, it's not to do with, you know, all to do with being you know, with virtuosity. And uh, even though, you know, it's, it's good to, to to set light to some fireworks once in a while. Sure. Um, but it's it's more, you know, you've got to, it's, you, it's emotions in storytelling. You know, you want to, you want to excite people, but at the same time, you want to make them laugh and you want to make them cry as well. And that is the the whole thing. Storytelling is is the is the key to it. Storytelling through the music. Yeah. Yeah. That's that's where I was going. Is that you? You know, when I listen to you play, I I always I do hear the story. I do hear the story, and I do hear the the um, the sincerity in which you want to communicate to your audience. Mm, yeah, you've that, got to want to do it. You know, that's you've got huge. to walk out on stage and and go. You know, you can't go. Uh, you know, oh, I'm gonna go. I'll go and play the. If, if they like it, then if they don't, you know, you've got to be out there. Wow, you know, I really want to play. So I, I want to share this, and I learned that. I learned a lot of that, and it wasn't something I studied, but it was just being on the stage every night with Stefan Grappelli. What you, and he was the. Sorry, I'm sorry. Go ahead. Yeah, he was really the first jazz musician that I worked with, that was very conscious of communication, of communicating the music. Because I, up to that point, I'd sometimes work with some absolutely incredible jazz musicians, mm -hmm. and I loved what they did. But it's almost like they 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 couldn't give it away when they went on stage. They couldn't engage right. uh, engage an audience apart from those of us sort of aficionados who go, "Wow, this is fantastic!" But you know, I use my wife as a gauge for these things. <laughs> If she says to me, "Oh, I don't like that," you know, I'm, all right, I, yeah, I, I under because my wife doesn't like jazz very much. Yeah, so, so, well, that's, she's in a long line. You know, we've heard that. Um, that's oh, the other thing I used to get. The other thing when I when I started playing solo was a lot of people used to come up to me and they would say, "Well, you know, I really don't like jazz, but I like that." Yeah, and I said, "Well, what what, what did you think jazz was?" You know. What, you know, jazz covers so many, many things. I think sometimes as well, for what I do, and, you know, I mean, jazz is the most incredible, incredible music. I was raised on it. My dad was a jazz musician. Mm -hmm. My great uncle was a jazz saxophone player. You know, so I, I, I've played with legends of jazz and, and you know, all the guitar players, Barney Kessel, Herb Ellis, Tao Falo, Joe Pass. Oh. You know, I'm absolutely... I'm absolutely steeped uh, in the music, but at the same time, this kind of storytelling that I have mm -hmm. and I try to get across doesn't all fit into the jazz box. So I think that the jazz box is a box within a, a larger box of what I do. It's not a better box that I have, yeah. but it's just a, it's just kind of a, a, a larger box that it fits uh, fits in that, you know, if you want to put things in boxes. Um, well, one of the things that we're trying to do here at, at, at the magazine, we were in our fourth year of, of doing this now, and um, is to educate people and do exactly what you just said. You know, that jazz is, is 
you know, it's, it's a, it's, that's a big, that's a small word that encompasses a whole lot of stuff. It's massive. Yeah, it's massive. And, and everybody has their, you know, their idea of what quote unquote jazz is. And, um, you know, it's in, in what we're, what we're trying to do is get people to open up their, their minds to, to don't think of jazz as this, because I don't like that, you know, like, like your friend and I said, I don't like that, but I like what you did, you know? <laughs> well, okay. But that's this, this is jazz too, you know, and, and all of that. So um, it's interesting that you, you, that you say that because um, that's one of the, the mission statements. So you're, you're, you're helping to validate us by, by saying that. Mm. So you're writing books. Yeah. You've written a, you've written a ton of them already. Yeah, I, I I've written six with fundamental changes. Mm -hmm. I wrote four during the the lockdown mm -hmm. in the eighteen months, <clears throat> and um, I'd written a couple before that. But uh, you know, the, the the thing is, I came late to teaching. Mm -hmm. I didn't start to teach until two thousand and nine. That was through artist works. Right. And they asked me to start the the online guitar school with them through uh, through Jimmy Bruno, Bruno, who was with them right at the very beginning. Mm -hmm. And um, uh, Jimmy recommended me and they asked me and I, I met up with them out in Napa, Napa, California. And we got talking and and I said, well, I don't know whether I can teach because I I haven't I've never taught before. I've never been taught. I never had lessons. Right. You know, I, I learned to play just on the, the gig. OJT um, yeah. on the job training, right? Exactly. So I, um, I was very conscious of the fact that teaching is more to do with demonstrating that, you know, to, to teach, you've got to have some kind of method. So what I had to do was have a look and say, well, I'd never looked at what I did and said, well, and analyzed it, you know, mm -hmm. so I had to start to analyze it. So it's been a process, which is a, I'm, it's continuing of analyzing my own playing and, and say, well, what is it I'm, what is it I'm, I'm doing here? And when I started to do that, cause it's, uh, it, um, it was very early days of interactive online teaching mm -hmm. and students would send me videos and I'd look at them and give them some advice. And I was sort of thinking, I didn't quite have sleepless nights, but it was kind of like, I wonder if I'm teaching this, well, doing this right. But then <laughs> as, as, you know, I'd get, they'd send, send a video then I'd reply, then another one, then another one. And I noticed after about three, maybe sometimes even less, even just after one, they played better. Mm -hmm. So I thought, well, something's working, right? Something's working here. And then I got into it more and more. And I started to uh, have the knack of just seeing what needed what needed to be done. And also be, because, you know, I, I, I never went to music college or, um, or studied in that kind of way. And I tend to, I don't really approach music um, with theory. I mean, I can, I can do to an extent, um, but I, I just, I just speak about music in the simplest way possible. And that seems to suit a lot of a lot of players if you get a player that is is maybe more they've they've been to a college or they've they're more theory based then right. i can talk more more that way but um because along the way you know i learned i didn't read music for many many years and but along the way i started to teach myself and and um kind of get a little bit better never got really good at it but uh, um you know i can read and write music um but you know and i understand the theory sometimes i might not get the, the words right i got in fact i got into i got into some trouble once i was i demonstrated something on um on facebook a chord that i liked and as i was explaining it and i'm playing and i'm talking um it was a, a chord challenge that somebody set up yeah uh, i i said d flat instead of c sharp and oh god wow, the amount of people that gave me a hug. oh no no it's not, it's not, it's not it doesn't matter we we don't we 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 at jazz guitar today do not go there i it's a, some oh, of the you things, know you know what i mean no you know? i i know i mean some of the things that i yeah, see so, defending defending their knowledge of theory just makes me nuts 
Yeah. But, but that's okay. <laughs> you know, everybody's got to have their, their thing. You know, you said something that you're talking about simplicity and all of that, going to school and, and all that. I, I, you, you have an honorary doctorate, I believe. I actually have two. Yeah. That's what yeah. I said. <laughs> so somebody thinks you're pretty smart uh, and you're an MBE as well, which is, yeah. <laughs> which is great. I mean, I am not worthy, you know, I feel like, <laughs> but, um, but you know, the, you said something today, I was watching um, one of your, your videos, one of your tea time videos. And for people who don't know, um, you're all over YouTube. Um, you know, if they want to know more about you or hear you play or, or get your, um, your thoughts and your philosophy on different things. You're all over YouTube, you're very, um, mm. very prolific on YouTube. Um, but you said something today about giant steps. Oh, yeah. I, I mean, this is you recorded this last last August, I believe it was. And I've seen it before. But for some reason today, it just it just hit me. And, you know, for for people that have always heard about giant steps and don't really know it was really an, an etude that Coltrane wrote, and it was it was a practice. And um, yeah. I, my my understanding is, and I could be wrong about this, is that he never performed it live. It was it was never on his on his set list. I've, you know, I've heard the recording of of him, but whether he whether he played it live, I don't know. Yeah, I I, I obviously you know we we all have the recording, you know, but but a, a friend of a, a teacher of mine told me that he had never. He could be wrong, and I could be wrong. We could all be wrong. But the point is, is that it was, it, it's always been thought of as, um, you know, a rite of passage, you know, to learn giant steps. Yeah. And, and so your comment, which just absolutely is, was, spoke to me was, and, and I'm going to paraphrase you because I can't give you a direct quote, but it's, you said, it's not that it's terribly difficult, but it is awkward. Yeah. And, and I thought to myself, yeah. <laughs> It is awkward. <laughs> it's, it's, well, if if yeah. you look at it, you can you can figure out what it is. It took me a while, and I, you know, you, it's like you have to map it out, right? Like like every tune, and and I can lose the thread quite easily with it, which is why I I actually haven't played it live yet, um, because I could do, but yeah. I just know if I lose the thread, I won't, won't find my way but back. I Jimmy, just, Jimmy, you you mentioned Jimmy Bruno. Jimmy Bruno you know, said, we're all just hanging on. If you lose it, you're gone, you know, <laughs> especially if you're, if they're playing at a tempo and all that. Yeah. But, you know, um, my, my father, he, he didn't take up music till he was in his late twenties. Uh -huh. And he, uh, so he, he, and he couldn't read or write music or didn't, wasn't a schooled musician, mm -hmm. but I, I used to go and play my, with my dad at, at like uh, village dances and weddings and things like that when I, right from when I was a kid. Then he, he'd play in little jazz venues, little kind of little bars and things in around London. And I used to sometimes go and sit there and, and, and join in because I knew some of these tunes because I'd, I'd heard them. I didn't necessarily know the names of them. And and I, I figured out that they're, all these tunes used similar kind of chordal things, you mm -hmm. know, chordal movement as I, as I saw it at the time. So um, a lot of these things repeated themselves. And sometimes, you know, if, if I played something, uh, but I couldn't quite hear where, where it was going, I, I said to my dad, you know, oh, you know, if, I get, if I get lost like that, and my dad said to me, <laughs> it was very funny, he said, if you get lost, just play Honeysuckle Rose. It fits any, everything. <laughs> <laughs> and, you know, that isn't such a, 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 a flippant answer because <laughs> Honeysuckle Rose is, is two five. Uh, right. <laughs> you know, it's just, it's a minor, minor you know, minor uh, two to the, the five uh, oh. dominant seventh. I love that. Your dad was a prophet. And, uh, yeah, you know, you but, know, but that, all those tunes, they were full of that stuff. It would, it would somehow or other, it would fit. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, here's the, here's the deal. Okay. You, 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 you didn't go to music school. Um, there's tons of people that did, um, you know, and, you know, and you learned the theory and all that late in life and, and all that, but, it it I, I you you must have been in your twenties when you started playing with Grappelli, yeah twenty two. Now I, I I interview a you know a lot of guitarists and I talk to a lot of guitarists and all that kind of stuff, 
And I usually ask them, well, who are your favorite guitarists? And usually, I mean, most often, um, you know, and jazz guitarists, and most often it's either Wes or Django. It's almost like two schools, mm -hmm. you know? And so, you know, and, and, the, and the passion for both of those guys is really, really high. And then Pat Martino, who we just lost this week, yeah, uh, sure. you know, is, uh, is always in there around third or fourth. Uh, at any rate, and so here you are without any of this quote unquote education and theory and all this kind of stuff. And you're taking the place of arguably the number one guitar player that ever lived. So my question to all those theory freaks out there is, come on, guys. <laughs> I mean, well, actually, it's in enough, your I... ear, it's in your head, it's in your fingers, it's in your heart, it's in your soul. You know, written music and all that is is to try to chronicle what was actually played, not to create things to play, if you will. And, um, and I probably had more theory knowledge than Django, actually. Oh, I'm sure you do. Yeah. <laughs> oh, I'm absolutely positive that you do. But I mean, the point <laughs> is, is that, you know, here you are, you're, you're, you're playing, you're taking the chair from arguably the number one guitar player who ever lived. Mm. You know, I mean, I mean, I know that people talk about but that's, that's huge. And, and yet, you know, your knowledge of music at the time, you said that as you've been going on, it doesn't matter. I mean, it's it's what you feel is what you you know, it's, hmm. I mean, I don't know that anybody an, ever analyzed or ever cared when you look at a Van Gogh painting, you know, if they're if they're really looking at the technical, I mean, some people are art students are looking at the, hmm. at the brush strokes and all that kind of stuff. But most people walk in the room and they're, you know, they're odd, you know, they don't even know where, where to go. And it's got nothing to do with what the brush strokes were and the hmm. technique, it has to do with what is the finished product. And that's you. I mean, you know, you're, you're one of the all time, you know, you're one of the all time greats. You really are. I mean, I'm not just saying that you really are. You're no. one of the all time great guitar players. And, and, and for you to be as humble as you are about it and, and saying it's just awkward. I mean, that cracked me up because I'm listening to all these guys. <laughs> I'm listening to all these guys trying to, you know, you, you know, the platitudes, you know, you've seen, you know, that's not a C sharp. It's a B flat or excuse me, D flat. <laughs> And, and, you know, the, you go there, but the bottom line is, uh, you know, that doesn't make a great painting, you know? Yeah. When I said it's awkward, what, what I was kind of saying was that because it's, it's a little bit awkward, it's very difficult to make it flow mm -hmm. and to sound musical. And it's I think for me, that's the most difficult thing ab about, su about giant steps and something like that, because it is an exercise right. and, a lot of the time it will sound I could play it in a way that it would sound like an exercise. But what I wanted to do was to turn it into something that really flowed. And and even, you know, for people to say, what is that tune? That kind of sounds familiar. <laughs> yeah. So, just I, you know, take something and just just give it another uh, so uh, another life. How do you how do you feel about your treatment of um of giant steps did you ever get get it to where you 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 feel about it? you feel good Not about quite. It? i played i was playing it yesterday grab actually. your guitar yeah. do you mind grabbing your guitar yeah okay i'll have to take my headphones off this be a whole lot better than me playing the guitar I'll because tell you that. i have to take my headphones off because they've got a slight delay oh that's and, fine uh, that's and fine when I, if i play with these on i keep slowing down no 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 <laughs> go ahead take them off we, we got you let me see if i can play it oh you don't have to just just give us a little That's beautiful. No, I can't remember. Oh, yeah.
<laughs> oh my god yeah so i was kind of coming up with some things things like that oh my god that's that's <laughs> that's <laughs> that's the prettiest version of giant steps i've ever heard but that you know what's beautiful. really nice is actually playing around it i'll take yeah. this off again um if you play it like out of tempo just kind of just um <laughs> finding different versions for the for, that's, the, for the chords that's just or that's absolutely gorgeous. and then improvising uh, a line on the top yeah that's absolutely gorgeous so that's it tell, tell us I, I mean I'm that that is you. that's that's phenomenal i'm gonna have to pull that up. tell us a little bit about your sound i mean you what, what guitar are you playing there this guitar is it's, it's my own model it's called a joya mm -hmm. it's made by a company called fibonacci right uh in england in surrey mm -hmm. and this is i have another model as well and it's just a, a 15 inch body mm -hmm. uh carved top uh it's beautiful it I sounds like incredible usually um well yeah i've got a bit of a mic mic here but when i record here i have a couple of mics on it as, as well and then i go through some lr bags uh pedals just to are warm you, the sound up to what um what amplifier are you playing through I'm, i don't use an amp i i always just go direct so it's direct so the the speakers that the, the sound that we're hearing is is it coming out of some speakers in your room there uh no this is going through um ecam that i have on here on my computer there's a um, reverb i'm hearing reverb in there yeah that's a that, that's a reverb on there and i've got an, uh, an eq oh okay Okay. Oh, so you you've got some LR bags pedals in line before you go. Yeah, into I've got that there, and that's what I use on stage. Uh, but if I was recording with my setup just just here, mm -hmm. then I have a couple of mics, uh, a condenser mic on the guitar, uh, around about here, and then a ribbon mic, around about right. where the tail tailpiece is. Oh, it's a and uh, beautiful. Yeah, I, I mean, I haven't used an, an amp for a long time. I think if you play, if you're playing in a, a group and you've got drums, right, uh, and everything, you, you kind of need an amp. Um, so when you do your live gigs, you're basically using those pedals, but you're going into a, a DI, and you're yeah, sending it to a, a house, DI. and then you're what you're listening to is monitor speakers on the floor. Yeah, then I have a couple of monitors. No wonder you were talking about how much how, how much fun it was to get out and play with a big sound system. <laughs> yeah because i know i like that because that, yeah, of course it's like yeah, <laughs> those wall of sound is, is right there at your finger yeah. I, I, could you say if i do I, play into an amp i find it really weird the, the sound coming out of this little box it's too you small know, like to, for what yeah, you like you got that yeah. big space going on yeah. well tommy tommy plays like that i mean tommy uses cool. a, a little aer amplifier and it's a there's a direct box and that goes to yeah. the big pa that's more of a monitor for him yeah yeah it's just so in fact it doesn't even use i mean you know but yeah and and that, that big sound that huge sound and um it's tremendous it sounds great what strings are you using these are elixir okay elixir and the gauges the are they 12s uh, 12, or 13s 12 13 12 on the top okay so, yeah um <clears throat> i like i've used these for quite a long time now and they're always the same when you put them on they just mm -hmm. have that and it, it it's it works for me because i don't want a real bright sound but no. at the same time i don't get a, a a regular kind of electric jazz guitar sound no it's 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 uh, got all kinds of overtones and sparkle and, and everything yeah and it, it's beautiful it's not all middle but if uh, you know if if i was playing in a different setup with like when i when ulf ulf Vikanius and i when we play mm -hmm. together he gets um <clears throat> he gets more of a regular kind of um he's got a big kind of thick big sound right then i change my sound a little otherwise i kind of sound like a 
a little mouse playing <laughs> ne next to him. <laughs> but, well, you know, there's a couple couple things. Um, I remember it was at the NAMM show about, golly, that has to be 15, 20 years ago. And, um, you know, when you go to the NAMM shows, for people who don't know this, North, was it... Uh, um, North American Music Merchants or something like that. I can't mm -hmm. remember what the, what the heck the, the, that it's for. But it's the big show, over 100,000 people, every guitar manufacturer, every keyboard, every every everything for music Amen. is there in in LA. And um, as a guitar player, I was, I was working because I, I had a business where I was kind of a behind the scenes guy uh, in the business end of, of the music business. And um, and but I would take an hour or two every day while I was there and I would go downstairs into the guitar area and I would check out all the guitars and hang with the guys and all that. And I did that for 30 years. But um, so you get kind of numb to hearing all the music that's going on because every booth has got somebody blowing, you know, on their guitar, their saxophone, drums, key, I mean, you get kind of numb. And I'm sitting there downstairs and I can't remember exactly what booth I was in. But all of a sudden I'm hearing this guitar thing going on and I'm going, okay, okay. Huh? What, what? Who the hell is that? <laughs> and I said, I said, I was talking to somebody. I said, excuse me, I gotta go find out who's playing over there. And it was you and Andreas Oberg oh, in, yeah. some, in some booth. Do you recall that? Yeah, I do. That was in the early days with artist works, artist works. It booth. had to be, yeah, it had to be 20 and years ago, maybe. Yeah, we went along and no, I don't think it was as long. Yeah, about 15, 15 years ago, maybe 15 years ago. Been, yeah. And I, I was like, Oh, my God, because prior to that, the only thing that ever got me to stop and listen to somebody play was when back in the day, uh, Joe Pass and Herb Ellis, and mm -hmm. all of those people used to play in the um, uh, the mini brute people, you know, the, the people that made yeah. that, that, that amplifier. Polytone. Yeah, polytone booth. And I don't know if you remember those days or not, but but they were always there every year. And Joe, yeah. and you could stand three feet away from Joe and hear him play his thing. And and Herb Ellis was there and Carol Kay would come and play. And you know, the whole the whole LA jazz scene was yeah. there. But but that was the only time I'd ever stop and actually listen to people play until that day when I saw you you guys just tearing it up and, and the tone was great and the sound was great it was, it was pretty incredible um but i i, I, don't, I just digressed into that I, I segued up in my own little my, my own little head so let's talk a little bit about what you're doing now and today and, and you got shows coming up and are you working on any recording projects or what let's 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 talk about yeah. you a little bit no i'm not doing any live shows till april next year okay that's and then it gets pretty full on i'm coming back to the states um we're doing a i was in the great guitars with with barney kessel and charlie bird for about three tours uh in the i guess it would have been the early 90s when herb ellis went back to working with um oscar peterson right and so i was i was in that group at the time and i've i've uh, over the years every so often i've got a couple of guitar players together and we've done a kind of great guitars. but you're not thing. that old you're not that old well i know i know I how very... old you are and that's so funny to me you're not that well, I was, old i was the kid you're the kid <laughs> I, all right i'm gonna tell on you you're 65 i believe right i'm 65 yeah yeah you're 65 years i'm 71. oh wow okay. you're looking good well thank you i work out you know i eat right you know and i i don't drink too much anyway but that's beside the point but you're not that old and you're out with the great guitars Barney mm. Kessel is a huge, you know, huge. Uh, I just think he's was well. Wonderful. I was nineteen when I first was with, yeah, yeah, first yeah. with Barney. Yeah, that's yeah. that. That's incredible. I, I get. I don't know how I missed that, but I. But I, I'm. I'm. I'm yeah, I learn something new on this every day. I don't pretend. Yeah. I know well, it. I. I never worked with them in the in the states. It was only yeah. in in uh, the UK. Do um, you know? We, so, go ahead. Yeah. So, um, Frank Vignola and I. Uh, uh, getting together with John Jorgensen and mm -hmm. we're going to be doing some great guitars things in May, April, May of next year. Well, I, I love, I love Frank, you know, we, we're huge Frank fans around here. And yeah. um, in fact, he and uh, Jimmy are doing something at Birdland every Wednesday now. I saw that. Yeah. Yeah. yeah they're doing something. And uh, we, we, we did a little bit of a promotion, you know, for them and, um, you know, Frank is, uh, you know, Frank's just a wonderful guy. And John Jorgensen, um, 
you know, he obviously he's, you know, he's been on our cover as well. And, sure. um, and I mean, that, that's amazing. I'm, I'm really glad he's going out, you know, cause you don't, yeah. you know, he's yeah, going to be fun. Oh, you guys will have a great time. Yeah. That, that'll, that'll be phenomenal. Yeah. So I've got another long spell without actually getting out there to play, um, <coughs> which is going to be interesting. But you don't um, mind. I don't mind. I'm getting a little stir crazy now. <laughs> I think. I mean, I I went out on the road for a little while back, and and I did two weeks. Do you know Martin Simpson? Uh, Martin, Only know him uh, by name. I don't know. Yeah, him we 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 did about eight or nine dates together. Then I did a couple of solo shows all around England, mm-hmm. and that was really nice because nowhere's too far away. You know, not not big travel sort of thing, and. Uh, and I really enjoyed being back out. And funny, yesterday I was sitting here and I was thinking, I'd quite like to be back out playing again. <laughs> but I don't, I don't miss it in the same way as, um, you know, I love playing for people, but it's not like I got to get up there yeah, uh, and, and, yeah. and do this. When I'm there doing it, you know, I'm, I'm absolutely loving it. And I get excited about doing it. Um, but I, I know a lot of musicians that, uh, you know, kind of suffered, um, kind of mentally for this because they they feel they're really at home when they're up on stage. Yeah, their their uh, identity when they're playing, and they just it's almost like their their whole identity right. disappeared. Keith, and I Keith think Richards. probably because I you know Sorry. I'm interested in lots of things, and mm-hmm. um, uh, I live out in the country, and my my wife, you know, we've been together for forever, so. Um, you know, it's it's been fine being locked up together because we're used to mm. each other. <laughs> <laughs> and I walk the dog and and things, and and you know, come up with ideas. The way I looked at it, I was talking to uh, Orphanius on the phone because he was really missing playing. He's out with Billy Cobham just now. That's amazing. Uh, I don't know, but he, uh, and he said he said I'm starting to get a bit fed up now. And I said, well, I look at it this way, and Think the amount of times when you're on the road, right? And all you have time to do is do that, mm-hmm. you know, of actually travel, you spend all days traveling, go and do the gig, and that's all you have time for. And you start thinking to yourself, I'd really like to do such and such a thing, and and well, I said now's the t- the time to do that, right? Yeah, if not now, <laughs> to do when? those things, yeah, yeah. not now when. Well, listen, we appreciate your time today. We've been at this for a while, and um. I can't tell you how much I really appreciate you coming on and talking to us. And hey, my pleasure, Bob. Thank you, Martin. Martin, you're a, you're a, uh, an inspiration for sure, and you're six years younger than me, which really pisses me off. <laughs> <laughs> oh, good. <laughs> you know, for, for so many years, mm-hmm. you know, for decades, I was always the young lad in the band. Yeah, I was always the kid, and then all of a sudden, I suddenly became the oldest. And it was, I, I still haven't quite got used to it. It's quite nice when sometimes I work with musicians I've, and even if one of them might be a little bit older than me. I just, oh, he's older than <laughs> or, me. Even, like, or even close. <laughs> at the beginning, but what, you know, everyone was older than me. <laughs> yeah, no, that's, that's, it's incredible. Well, again, it's our honor that you're, you're here with us today and we, we really appreciate oh, thank it. Thank you. And, and uh, we'll, we'll be, uh, I don't, you'll be, we'll be listening and watching and waiting and, when you come to the states, I'm sure you'll probably come somewhere close to where I'm going to be. And uh, where, where are you based? I live in Atlanta, Georgia. All oh, right, I, I haven't been in Atlanta for a long time, but I'm sure we'll get yeah. there again at some uh, point. Uh, or Nashville or some, you know, some place that's you know that's yeah. not, not too far away. We'll try to make that happen. Yeah, things will uh, get moving again next year. Uh, um, you know, from your lips to God's ears. You know, <laughs> I, I'm hoping so. Well. Martin, thank you so much. Uh, Bob Baker for Jazz Guitar Today with Martin Taylor, MBE. How do you say that correctly? Am I doing that right? MBE, yeah. That's yeah, just right. say Martin Taylor, MBE. I don't have to. It's, it's Well, it stands for uh, Member of the Order of the British Empire. Right. But I always tell people it, it means uh, moderate banjo exponent. <laughs> 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 oh, oh, does the Queen know that? <laughs> well, funny enough, there's a, f- there's a famous football player here, and I just watched on the TV, uh, on the news, he got an MBE, and you see him there. It was Prince William that was giving him the, the MBE because the, the Queen's kind of 
taking a bit of time off right now. Right. And he, he was there at the Windsor Castle and he was given the, the MB. And I was just sitting there, you know, in my pajamas. And I thought, having it with a cup of tea, and I thought, oh, I've got one of them. <laughs> <laughs> I've done that. <laughs> I've done that. Man, I'll tell you, it's, it's, such a, it's such a pleasure. Bob Baker for Jazz Guitar Today with Martin Taylor, MBE. Thank you so much. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Bye-bye now. Bye now.